And so glad you are up with us here on a Wednesday, getting halfway through the week, and it's going to be a nice day out there. So glad you're with us. I'm Eric Connard. And I'm Nettie Iramport. Coastal Roots, such a magical yeah. place. Looking forward to that story. Uh, let's get a check with Evan here this morning. Talk about that forecast. Yeah, looking nice outside. We've got a little bit of gray as per usual for this time of year. May, of course, coming through with that May gray, and that continues today for your Wednesday and really for every day to come. Thursday and Friday still going to encounter it. However, clouds aren't quite as expansive as they've been for previous mornings. We've got temperatures trending just a few degrees warmer than where they were yesterday, mostly in the upper 50s and 60s as we start off your morning, and then we're going to warm up. So we've got upper 60s along the coastline, mid 70s inland, 80s for your mountains, 90s for the deserts. Jenny? So not too much going on traffic wise. We've got, uh, whoa, looks like another crash popped up, but we've got a crash on the southbound side of the five at Manchester and Sanitas area single lane blocked, no massive delays. Spring Street, that entrance ramp from the eastbound side of the eight, partially blocked because of a big old truck, and this one just popped up as I was walking up. But it looks like we've got a crash on the northbound side of the five, right smack at the bridge. Bridge is heavy, northbound five is heavy approaching the bridge as well. Thank you, Jenny, and we do have some breaking news to bring to you now. Look at this, a homicide investigation underway right now in North Park. Now, this is at the corner of El Cajon Boulevard and Texas Street, a pretty busy area right outside that McDonald's that's right there on the corner. Police got reports of a shooting around 2.40 this morning. As you see in this video, a man was taken to the hospital, and that man later died. Police described the suspect as a white man in his 40s, thin to normal build, so this shooter is still on the loose. He was last seen wearing all white and driving a white SUV. So they're asking for help to try to locate this shooter of this homicide. Call police if you have any information. Well, this morning, the Padres are dealing with a number of COVID-related concerns impacting some uh, big names on the team. Now, the team trying to figure out what to do next. News 8's Chris Grove joining us live at Petco Park. They'll be back to Petco here to start a new homestand in a few days uh, with possibly some changes to that roster. Hi, Chris. Good morning, Eric Anetta. Yes, it's very likely we won't see Fernando Tatis Jr. or Will Myers as both have tested positive for COVID-19, but we're also learning that Jorge Mateo, Eric Posmer, as well as Jerickson and Profar have all been placed on the IL due to some contact tracing. Here is manager Jace Tingler talking about the fact that Will Myers had to be actually taken out of the game last night after they found out about his positive test. Will tested uh, about positive for COVID and, and that's why uh, he had to leave the game. Um, all our testing is is back and um, uh, you know obviously Haas left the game as well and and that was more on um, you know just following the uh, MLB protocols with uh, the contact tracing you know the way everybody kind of stepped up and filled in and you know um, they did a good job and uh, you know we'll kind of wait and see but uh, you know hopefully that's that's it with all the tests coming back. Now we're told that Tatis Jr. and Myers are both asymptomatic, so that is the good news. And they did win last night, eight to one, despite the news and despite Myers and Hosmer being removed from the middle of the game. But the question now: What happens next? Well, both Tatis Jr. and Myers have to isolate from the team for 10 days and test negative before getting clear to return to the team by both a doctor and a joint committee. As for Mateo, Profar, and Hosmer, they have to quarantine for seven days and test negative on day five or later and remain symptom free throughout. While it's not clear if Tatis Jr. or any of the other players are vaccinated in this sort of cluster of cases, we do know that according to ESPN, the Padres have yet to reach the 85% threshold of vaccinations that would allow for looser restrictions around the team that is both players as well as key on field staff that is lumped into that group there that they want to see 85 percent become vaccinated. Now we also heard from manager Jace Tingler that it's not clear if any of the players like Fernando Tatis Jr. or they do not believe I should say that Tatis Jr. broke any of the COVID restrictions before testing positive. Eric Inetta. Chris, thanks. And we are seeing reaction to the Padres news on social media. Cruz Fernando tweeted, why are people so surprised? We are dealing with COVID every day right now. Balmer Tati's got it, but we have other guys and let's hope he's okay. Go Padres. And here's Rodol tweeting, please, baby Jesus, no more positive COVID tests for the Padres.
And uh, you see that gift that he included, too. And many of you also commenting on our Facebook page asking why the players have not been vaccinated. And as Chris just mentioned here, we don't know if they have. And some people can still get sick after being fully vaccinated, though their illness is less severe. So we'll keep you posted on any updates as they come in here. Uh, turning now to the vaccine, we could be just a day away from the county starting to administer the COVID vaccine to younger children. Today, there are a number of key developments to consider before this can all happen. And News 8's Allison Royal live outside Claremont High School with a closer look at uh, what we can expect here today. Allison. Good morning, Eric and Netta. Well, we are here at Claremont High School in... Claremont, where San Diego Unified is offering free COVID-19 vaccinations today. They're also offering them at two other campuses in its district today, and that's Morris High School and San Diego High School. Now, of course, there are a number of major developments that we want to get to when it comes to the Pfizer vaccine possibly being approved for emergency use for children. The CDC will likely give the green light for children ages 12 to 15 to receive the vaccine sometime today. Then today, the California Department of Public Health is expected to vote on authorizing the Pfizer vaccine for kids in anticipation of their approval. County public health officials here in San Diego said parents can start making those appointments. Appointments at places like Rady Children's are expected to open up starting at 3:30 this afternoon. San Diego County has been pushing for a few weeks to offer vaccines for interested teenagers and young adults. Currently, it's people that are ages 16 and older that are eligible in California to receive the Pfizer vaccine. However, now the vaccine would be an option for many more young people as San Diego County is home to more than 175,000 people ages 12 to 15. According to, S to San Diego County Public Health data, the risk of kids dying from COVID-19 is still low. To give you an idea, San Diego County is the fifth most populous county in the country, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. Two people ages 19 or younger have died of COVID-19 countywide since the pandemic started early last year. Some parents appreciate the option to get their children vaccinated. Some said that they've been living extra cautiously, while others are still holding off more to see what happens. But we spoke to one pediatrician that said it is likely that Pfizer will recommend a booster shot annually for children and for adults as well due to variants. The Pfizer vaccine is one of the best against protecting you for the variants, but those are just the variants that have been identified. There are new variants popping up all the time, as you know, and, and we're worried that it's just a matter of time before a variant comes up where the vaccines don't, don't work at all. And those teenagers that are interested in receiving a vaccine here today will need a parent to sign a waiver, but it is also open for free vaccinations for interested community members and teachers. For the latest information on how to make an appointment, if you have any questions, you can always hit up our website that is cbs8.com. I'm going to send it back to you too, Eric and Netta. Thank you, Allison. And if you still need to get your vaccine, a local hospital stepping up to make that a little easier. Alvarado Hospital in the college area hosting these vaccine clinics. Appointments are required. Clinics will be held tomorrow and Friday and next Wednesday and Thursday from 8 a.m. to 2.30 in the afternoon. We have more information for you at CBS8.com. Just click on the help button. Governor Gavin Newsom set to announce major investment towards public schools today. It's part of what he calls his California comeback plan. The governor will be in Monterey County this afternoon. The announcement will be live streamed from the governor's social media pages. It all starts at 1:15. This comes after the governor made a stop in San Diego to propose $12 billion to help fight the state's homelessness crisis. The money would expand the Operation Home Key program, which allows cities to buy and transform hotels and motels into housing units. Funds will also go toward rental support and other services. A local educator heading to Washington to help shape policy for teachers across the country. San Diego Unified Superintendent Cindy Martin was just confirmed by the Senate as the new Deputy Education Secretary. Martin taught young San Diegans for more than 30 years before leading San Diego Unified for nearly a decade. Okay, let's send it over to Evan now with a check of uh, those clouds out there this morning. Hello, May Gray. Yeah, right, I know. Yet another morning where we're encountering that right along the coast. We've got uh, most of the cloud cover hugging the coastline, pushing towards some of your inland valleys, but not quite as far inland as previous mornings that we've seen. We're going to be seeing those afternoon temperatures warm their way up to the upper 60s right along the coast, mid 70s inland, 80s across your mountains. So this is a few degrees warmer than where we saw those temperatures yesterday and possible near triple digits 
digits for your deserts. Looks like 98, 99 degrees is where we'll cap out, but hey, anything goes. You could see a 100 degree high in areas like Ocotillo Wells, uh, Borrego Springs, for example, but still 82 across the mountains is toasty nonetheless. You can see the last several hours have brought those clouds along uh, the coastline up around the North County. Oceanside doesn't seem to be struggling too much with those clouds. That means as you push toward areas of Orange County, the same situation applies. However, the majority of the San Diego coastline is encountering that cloud cover. Now, Today we're going to be seeing those temperatures warm their way up to the upper 60s and low 70s. Clouds start to part beyond about 8 a.m. Plenty of sunshine in the mix beyond 10 and 11 a.m. Next several days keep us cooling down actually. So as we head toward your Saturday and your Sunday, those will be the notably cooler days, 66 and 64 degrees before we start to see another temperature warm up as we head into about the middle of next week. Average is 69 degrees, so all of these next 10 days fall roughly within about 5 degrees of average nonetheless.